Hello, and welcome to the Underhive. Thank you for joining me here for something new to the channel. We're going to be casting some Total War Warhammer 2 replays. Firstly, just a quick couple of thank yous. Thank you to Jorin for setting up a section on the server there, specifically for people to submit community replays as opposed to specifically for him, just so it's clear that the permission is there. Secondly, thanks to Saltier Than You for uh, pushing that particular point uh, and getting an answer a little bit quicker than I would have otherwise, just waiting for the response. And thirdly, thank you to Plague Master for submitting this replay. So let's take a look at the armies. So we'll just slow these armies down a little bit. I believe we've got Plague Master on the uh, Vampire Coast here, but he is going by a different name on screen, so I'm not 100% sure, but we've got his opponent, Friar Wu, with the Dark Elves. So starting with the forces of the Vampire Coast, we've got some scurvy dogs on both sides here. Uh, one on the left there with a the Chevron. Uh, we've got a bloated corpse making his way for the tree line. Uh, zombie pirate deckhands with pole arms on the flanks. We've got the Lampreys Revenge as well as some regular rotting Promethean gunnery mobs uh, in the flanks. In the rear here, we've got some gunnery mobs with handguns. A couple more dotted about there on the front lines as well as some gunnery mob bombers. And for the leadership here, we've got a Vampire Fleet, pi uh, fleet Admiral with a pistol and lore of vampires as well as a gunnery white a lot of powder here so certainly going to be able to make use of the more powder ability and for the forces of the dark elves over here on the left we've got dark riders with shields i was expecting to see the range variant there but fair enough going for the melee variant and we've got some scourge runner chariots they could get some real work done there big heavy lifting piece in the rear, we've got some Shades, Witch Elves, and more Shades for the front line. Bleak Swords, Black Art Corsairs, all mixed in, but that is pretty much that. And for the leadership, we've got Malice Darkblade, bit of an off-meta pick, and a Sorceress of Death, as well as a Master. Is that an Assassin Master? Nope, just a Master. I've not actually seen that unit in action myself, so uh, that'll be fun to see how much of that can get going. So let's see how these armies sort of line up here towards the beginning of this fight. Certainly got a bit of posture in there. The scurvy dog's moving down. Oh, there was uh, a third set there that I'd missed just off on the very left flank here. Dark Rider's pulling back in. And the bloated corpse has found his way through the trees. Is he going to get these bleak swords early? Uh, sorry, the Corsairs. And that has taken nearly a full unit of Corsairs out. I don't know if they're going to shatter off the back of that. But the pirate gunnery mobs opening up now. And those bombers too are getting some work done against the Corsairs. This front line is not going to be able to hold out in melee for very long. But if they can make them... Oh, those Corsairs are being dissolved by the power there. But it looks like we've got a spell coming off here. Yep. We've got the... Uh, I forget what it's called now. The... The Law of Death version, but it's, you know, essentially banishment, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, uh, is it Purple Sun? Yeah, I think it's Purple Sun there. Uh, and in the engagement in the back here, we've got the Scurvy Dogs taking out the Dark, Dark Riders. And they're actually performing really well there on both sides. 2v1 in this case. Uh, the Rotting Prometheans hanging back for the moment, but they're going to be able to, uh, to wrap up these Corsairs. The leadership is, appears to be affected negatively there. Might have been... Oh, no, it's the Spirit Leech going off from the enemy caster here. Lord Malice Darkblade coming through on foot. The Scourge Runner Chariot's in at the back here. Definitely going to be breaking these uh, breaking these gunnery mobs down. And the gunnery mobs at the rear being shot to pieces by the Shades. They're certainly getting the better of that trade there. Malice taking a few hits here from the Rotten Prometheans, but the Master is there for support. The Master is an anti-large specialist, so certainly going to be making those Rotten Prometheans pay. They are taking quite heavy casualties. Uh, they have still got five units, five uh, models left in the unit. These Bleak Swords here perhaps staying there in reserve, but it does seem that this pocket is being won by the Dark Elves here, more over this flank towards the Vampire Coast. We've got an invocation perhaps going... Oh, no, sorry. That's the enhanced ballistics. So that's going to be buffing up these gunnery mobs. But I don't know if they're going to be strong enough to take down this chariot. That is certainly not a trade they're going to want to be making. No, not at all. 
Back in the middle here, we've got the leadership going at it big time. The master is taking some hits, but the vampire fleet captain is a large unit there, so they're going to be taking pretty big damage from the master if he can take a hit. But of course, their summon going to be protecting him. We've got the deckhand mob regular taking out those bleak swords a little bit. The first set of shades have shattered, and so have the Dart Riders. They really got pounded by the Scurvy Dogs. That was great play from Plague Master uh, getting in on those. I wasn't aware that trade would work out so well, but it, it really did. Those, uh, those Scurvy Dogs are really going to have paid for themselves. 36 kills already. They've got onto the Shades, uh, taking out the Missile Plate from the Dark Elves. But it is very much in the favour of the Dark Elves here at the moment. The Blob Fight... Not going to be as heavily in the favour of the Dark Elves without having Marathi there to debuff the enemy uh, infantry. But the Scurvy Dogs certainly making use of their ability to chase down the Shades. I don't think those Bleak Swords are going to catch up. The Master has been routed for the time being. Malice there. Certainly, uh, well, he's got one kill, which I imagine is going to be the Gunnery White. So he's got some value. He's not yet changed to Demon form, so... He's got life in the old dog yet, or maybe has he? Oh no, it appears he may well have. Did not see that occur. Vampire Fleet Captain, he's absolutely bottled it here. But it is a good play. Keep him out of the action for a moment. Don't let him get tangled up with Malice. This is a losing battle here. Scourge Run has taken some hits. That's down to only uh, two models now. Not too much HP left on each of them. But there is uh, quite an overwhelming amount of Dark Elf infantry still here. The Rotting Promethean Gunnery mob could get some, some work done there, but they're, they're definitely leaving their leader out in the open here. He's just being pinged by the, uh, by the chariots there. Scourge Runners making them pay. The Scurvy Dogs seem to be crumbling now, taking some damage over time. Roughly 10 HP a second, I believe. Those Bleak Swords... Really, you would expect would win that fight, but they're, they're taking even hits. Perhaps going to be cycle charging or pushing onto the Corsairs. It does look like a, a better option. Get that charge bonus there. Another 24 in the melee attack and the weapon damage. Well, they, they've routed those Corsairs before they've gone, so that's pretty good. If they want to charge back onto the Bleak Swords, that might be worthwhile. But back to the leadership fight. The fleet captain is holding his own against some bleak swords here, but you would expect that with a you know the lower tier infantry of the dark elves. The master is now being pounded by the rotting Corinthians. He is pretty much out of the fight. Black Ark corsairs there have now shattered. This has swung back into the favour of the uh, the rotting pirates here. Sartosa playing it well. I do think that these these disintegrating wolves have really got some value there. Uh, 120 kills. They've taken out a lot of infantry. These rotting Prometheans have got the match on their back, really. If they can turn this around, that is a phenomenal victory. Great play by both players here, but certainly the use of these rotting Prometheans and the use of those walls. I didn't really get a great look at what happened there, so maybe we'll cut back and see how they did in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, I think we I think we want to check out what happened with those. Uh, but I think, really, the Rotten Prometheans have turned this fight around. As well as the clever play to uh, to bring the Vampire Fleet Captain out of the fight until there was really only a Chaffee infantry unit. I don't think it's fair to call any elves Chaffee, but the Bleak Swords, of course, being a, a lower value infantry unit than, uh, than some others. But it's not over yet for the Dark Elves. Uh, the Bleak Swords, two sets coming in now. Uh, 23 and 24 models, so that's kind of half a stack, really. Uh, or the better part of a stack, but many of them have lost health. And there's another stack of 48 there, so really we've got a whole stack of Bleak Swords, but hopefully they're not going to uh, be routed one by one for the case of the Dark Elves there. But as I've said earlier on, it's really all resting on these rotten Prometheans here. Looks like we've got an increased power reserve. We might have another summon, potentially another heal going off. Uh, yeah, it looks like a heal. And the Dark Elves have crumbled and gone. 
uh, that is the end. So I'm quickly going to cut back to what happened with these uh, rotting Prometheans here and how they swung that fight. But certainly, great, great battle there from both players. Well done. I do think they held out to the last. We'll check the values when we come back in just a moment. But we can see there, yeah, 153 kills. Definitely paid for themselves. Unlike the Lampreys Revenge, but perhaps they were targeted down. So let's just take another analytic look at how these rotting Prometheans did. And I would also like to take a look at the Witch Elves and what they were getting. So for the first minute and a half of the fight, the Rotten Prometheans stayed back. And that probably did help them out. The Witch Elves, again, also staying back. And we've seen there that both of these units got a lot of kills and, and certainly got some value. Uh, a lot of value in the case of these Rotten Prometheans. So, of course, the, uh, the buff for the Dark Elves there going off. Quite early in the fight, but that was probably down to the a explosion from the uh, bloated corpse there, taking out almost a full stack. So the Witch Elves came in, and the Rotten Prometheans were pulled back then from the engagement. And it looks like, yeah, they, they came in against the Polearm Chaff, so this isn't a great fight for the Polearm, really. Uh, the Witch Elves, of course, uh, fairly elite infantry, uh, dealing uh, 35 anti-infantry damage. Uh, so they're going to be getting a bonus on that per attack. The Rotten Prometheans did then get in on the Witch Elves. So with the support of these Chaff to take some of those attacks, they were able to get in there and really deal some damage. Armor piercing and uh, very strong weapon strength there, 77. So it looks like they took out the majority of this unit. Started taking some damage there, so it looks like the uh, Witch Elves sort of switched onto them a little bit more, and the Bleak Swords were very committed to that fight. The Scourge Runners then came in and took a few hits, uh, and the Witch Elves did manage to rampage them a little bit, so that probably accounted for a lot of those kills really just being uh, within this infantry corps, because, oh no, the rampage stopped, so... These being rampaged isn't a big deal, so if anything, that was probably a, a good thing for Sartosa. And yeah, so it, it looks like although there were a lot of kills there, they were virtually all zombies for the Witch Elves. Whereas the Prometheans were able to get Witch Elf kills, they were able to get Bleak Sword kills. And they were able to do a real good number on the Master, despite his uh, Deadly Onslaught heroic ability. And from there, we, we kind of know what happened. They were able to uh, to defend their lord, and that was that. Well, great stuff. I've got to say, I I thoroughly enjoyed that match. It was very back and forth. I think uh, for the first few minutes, you'd be quite understandably behind the pirates of Sartosa with the uh, with the bloated corpse getting uh, a full unit wiped essentially. But then once the lines met, it was very clear that the the infantry were better for the dark elves, as you would expect. And they certainly got rid of many of the infantry units for the vamp uh, zombie pirates here. But the healing, the summon, and the value generated from those rotting Prometheans, I think is what won the fight there. Uh, great play from both players, uh, but particularly uh, a great use of the rotting Prometheans. I do think the... Regiment of Renowned version were, were shut down very quickly, uh, but understandably, you're going to lose our unit. Uh, but great stuff from both players. Thank you again to Playmaster for the replay, and I will see you next time in the Underhive.